coffee? No, thanks, Paul. What's gotten into your young brother lately? Tearing around the countryside? Playing poker? Getting home at all hours? Boy, you're just young. So in his oats. Then we should straighten out and confine his oat sowing activities to the ranch. Let right, him out of bed, will you? He'll spend the whole day there. I'll get him. Hey, Joe. Joe, wake up. Wake up, wake up. Up, madam. Come on. Hey. you do that? Oh, my head. Ooh. Let me see. Ah! Oh! Oh! Hey, Joe, did, did you do that just now? No, I didn't do it just now. It's a long story. Yeah, well, tell me about it later. Paul's waiting for you downstairs, and he's in a bad mood. Oh, just my luck. He's got to be in a bad mood. Oh, has everybody got to be in a bad mood? What a lump. you get in last night anyhow, little brother? Oh, I guess about four o'clock. It's a good thing Paul didn't catch you. You'd have more lumps that warm. Ooh, Hoss, I must have laid in that road for hours after they bushwhacked me. How much did he get over of you anyhow? Well, I started out with about $20, and after the poker game, I guess I had close to 100 Wow. You sure got a talent for trouble, little brother. Paul sends you into town to get the mail. You end up in a poker game, win $100, and then get bushwhacked. How do you get in all them messes, anyhow? Well, there's this new tin horn gambler in town named Traeger. He's bragging everybody about how great his cards were, so I thought I'd show him. Show him what? Like how to draw to an inside straight? <laughs> you know, I did, too. I drew an inside straight against him. He was a big loser in the game. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he wasn't the one that bushwhacked me. He was a real bad loser. Here comes Paul, talk about something else. <clears throat> Hoss? Yes, sir. Here's the list of supplies. And you, young fellow, don't forget that window pane. Yes, sir. Make sure that I get some of a decent hour, will you? Yes, sir. Owen, stop into the post office, see if a package has arrived from Adam. Oh, yeah, when's he coming home? In about a week. Oh, I got a letter from him, which this young man finally brought. Uh, seems he bumped into an old friend of his, a clipper captain, who needed some ready cash. So, uh... The fellow offered to sell Adam a beautiful uncut ruby which he picked up in India. Adam buy it? He sure did for a thousand dollars. Worth much more, of course. That Adam. Ain't he a shrewd one? Yeah, he sure is. He didn't want the ruby stolen or maybe lost, so he put it in a small plain box and sent it home. So, check at the post office, huh? You feeling all right? Look awfully pale. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, Bob. I know that. I'll try to make up for tonight, will you? Oh, oh, oh. 
Why don't you start ordering those supplies? I'll be back in a minute and help you load them. Wait a minute, where are you going? Over to saloon. Now, Joe, don't you think you got enough trouble without going over there and getting yourself in another poker game? Look, stop worrying me. I'm not going to get in another poker game, I promise. So we'll see if that tin horn's over there. Whether he skedaddled out of town after he bushwhacked. Joe, you ain't got no proof that he's the one that done it. He's throwing my money around, I got proof. Hey, Joe, how can you tell it's your money or not? Well, it's going to cost you 10. Morning, little Joe. What do you have? That doesn't for me, Sam. Just killing time. Say, uh, has that Traeger fella been around? You getting in on it, Joe? Getting in on what? Flapjack contest. <laughs> the what? The flapjack eating contest Saturday. You know, on Founders Day. The Merchants Association sponsoring it. Here. Just signed up for it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> flapjack contest. Hey, what's Traeger got to do with it? Why, well, he's taking bets on Big Ed Simpson winning the contest. That's why I thought you wanted him. Well, he's taking bets, huh? Yep. Giving five to one if Big Ed Simpson wins the contest. Hi, little Joe. Hi, Give little me two beers, Sam. Right. Hey, well, where is Traeger? In the back room. All right. Thanks. Two beers. I hear you're throwing all kinds of money around, Traeger. What? Oh, well, last night after the poker game, you said you were broke. Now you're throwing all kinds of money around in some contest. Well, it ain't none of your business, but I ain't throwing no money around at all. All I'm doing is making bets on Big Ed here winning the flapjack contest. Uh, flapjacks is my favorite food. Especially when the prize is $500. Now, Big Ed, you simmer down. Stop your bragging. Otherwise, I'm going to have to raise the odds on you. So how are you going to pay off if he loses? Big Ed ain't going to lose. But if he does, the payoff is my business. So like I was saying, I'm taking bets on Big Ed at five to one, and I'm paying off by the book. Put me in for $10. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Joe. What's so funny? <laughs> I'm afraid this deal is a little too big for you, little Joe. When I talked about five to one, I was talking about 500 to 100 dollars. Oh, well, that's fine. Put me down for 100 dollars. Oh, well, caught right. 100 dollars. That's right. And I'll be right here Saturday to collect. Yeah, you better be right here Saturday to pay off. <laughs> See you, Sam. See you, Joe. Well, little brother, you sure have been a big help this morning. I had to load all these supplies by myself. What you been doing in there all this time, anyhow? Ah, well, just signing up for the flapjack contest. Surprising. I never knew you was fond of flapjacks. Oh, I'm not. You are. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I, I just signed you up for the flapjack contest. That's, that's crazy. If I wanted flapjacks, I'd just get Hop Singh to mix me up a batch. The winner of the flapjack contest gets $500. Is that a fact? Yep, that's a fact. After you win a contest and I win my bet, there's a thousand dollars. What bet? Well, Traeger's in there. He's given five to one odds that Big Ed Simpson's gonna win the contest. I knew you could not eat him any day of the week, so naturally I had to bet against him. Joe, all you're doing is making a lot of trouble for yourself. Paul finds out you've been gambling again, He's gonna clobber you. I'm gonna get more than clobbered if I don't get $1,000 before Adam gets back. Now, what in tarnation's Adam got to do with it? Then when I got bushwhacked? Yeah. Well, he also stole a little package that I picked up at the post office. Adam's $1,000 ruby? Adam's $1,000 ruby. You see, Hoss, I gotta get that money. I just gotta. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what you gotta do, little brother. You gotta tell Paul this, this whole miserable story. Just lay it on the line. Now, that's what you gotta do. But, but, but stop to think for a minute. 
try, try to visualize what's going to happen when I tell him the truth. Can you see it? Now, w wouldn't it be easier just to, to win the $500? They had good flapjacks. Oh. Oh. Who's Oh, he'll be low in a minute, but he's just walking the rest of the way home. He's walking? What in heaven's name for? Well, for, for exercise. That'll build up his appetite. He eats more than all of us put together. Why does he have to build up his appetite? Well, for the flapjack contest. The flapjack? Say that again. This Saturday is Founders Day in Virginia City, right? Yeah. Well, part of the big doings is a flapjack contest. I entered horse. I figure he's a cinch to win it. Sure. And of course, you fellas have nothing better to do. Hmm. I'd unload those supplies. Oh. And very first thing, put that window pane back in your room. Holy Toledo pile of window pane. You forgot it. Oh, Pa, I, I was so busy, it just slipped my mind. Sure you were busy entering horse at a flapjack contest. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll go back and get oh, it. Oh, no, you won't. You just stay right here. There's plenty for you to do around here. Now, just unload the supplies. Yes, sir. Yes, Hoss thought of it for me. Congratulations. Hey, what have you got out there, Hopsing? Smells delicious. Fried pork chop. Pork chops. Uh, hot dog, that's my favorite, Hopsing. Bring them and starve them to death. Hungry enough, I could eat fried bear fat. No, oh, Hoss, please. Hey, didn't I tell you exercise and improve your appetite? Didn't I? That's right, buddy. Oh, yeah, Pa. Ah. Mm, no, no, thanks, Hop Singer. I, I don't care for any salad. I'll just have the pork chops. Mr. Joe say this your supper. What? Yeah, it's a, it's a diet. Oh, it's real good. Carrots and celery and an apple. It'll keep you alive. Joe, I'm, I'm starving to death after all that exercise. I can't live on this rabbit food. Do you want to win the $500 or don't you? Yeah, but Joe, this ain't fair. All right, go ahead. Go on, stuff yourself. Eat the pork chops, have the bread, the peas, have dessert. Go on, gorge yourself. Don't worry about the promise you made to me. Go ahead, lose the $500. I've done everything I can do. Oh, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold your horse a minute. I didn't say I wouldn't eat this rabbit food, but I'm just worried about... Who's going to pick me up when I fall over in a dead faint from hunger? Hoss, you know you can count on me. I'll be with you every minute till Saturday. Yeah, I reckon I could bet on that. It, if you'll pardon the expression, Bo. <clears throat> Joseph. Joe. Have you ever thought of going into politics? Oh, Hoss, do you have to make all that noise? What in tarnation is going on down there? 
Well, nothing, Pa. It's all right. Go back to sleep. What are you doing down here? Hmm? What are you doing down here? What are you doing down here, Joseph? It's too cold to sleep in my room with the window broken. And what is your excuse? I came down here to get a drink of water. A drink of water, my foot. You came down here to sneak some food out of the kitchen, didn't you? Hmm? <laughs> and you're sorry, aren't you? Oh, you're not sorry. I'm hungry, Joe. Hungry, that's what I am. And you are going to stay hungry until the contest is over. Now go upstairs and go to bed. Forget I'll be here all night long. Right there. Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pa. I'm coming up. I'm just straightening up. You finished, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, thank you. I'm saying. Joseph. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, Pa? Now, look. Either you eat your breakfast or you go back to bed. Either one, but do one of them, will you? Yeah, I'm sorry, Pa. Sorry. As well with the horse banging around half the night, I just didn't get much sleep. Well, let me remind you, young man, that nobody got too much sleep last night. And everybody would be much better off if you'd stayed in bed instead of sitting around spying on your brother. Morning, Paul. Come on. I'm saying you got any breakfast for me? Hey, where's the apple? And Mr. Joe say apple only for supper. I'm going to seek the peace and quiet of the upper pasture. And against my better judgment, I'm forced to send both of you into Virginia City again to get some more fencing which we need. And I'm going to count on you, Horst, to see that your young brother keeps out of trouble. That ain't always easy. But... I'm making it your responsibility, Horst. And as for you, young man, don't come home without that window pane. You know you can count on me, Pa. Well, I'm sure trying, son. I'm sure trying. Excuse me. All right, let's go. I ain't finished my breakfast yet. I promised Paul I'd keep you out of trouble. Trouble? Who's getting into trouble? I just got an idea to get us out of trouble. More, more trouble than we got out of yesterday. Hey, hey don't, don't forget the window pane. The window pane. Get up. Get up. All right, Sam. 
You're getting to be a regular customer. How come you're back in town again today? Ah, uh, horse and I came in to pick up some fencing. I'm just killing time till he gets it ready. Oh, that's hard work. Waiting, I mean. <laughs> so have a beer. I'll take you up on it. Sounds good. Well, if it ain't the big old spender from the Ponderosa. <laughs> What's on your mind, Traeger, besides the usual larceny? Well, I hear you got that big fat brother of yours entered into the flapjack contest. Yeah, that's right. And that big brother of mine's gonna ruin you when you have to pay off all those bets. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. What do you think about that, uh, Big Ed? Nothing. That hoss has been eating so high on the hog out there at the Ponderosa that he ain't gonna be no competition at all. Now, you gotta be poor to be hungry. And I ain't had a job in six months. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Codright? I think your friend's head's as fat as his belly. I'll tell you why he hasn't worked in six months, because he's lazy. And that's why you're gonna lose, because my brother horse is not only a big eater, he's also a fast, ambitious eater. You, uh, wouldn't be willing to put your money where your mouth is? Oh, are you talking about another bet? Now, what else would I be talking about? Now, let's see, my confidence in Big Ed was five to one. What's yours in that brother yarn? Well, I don't want to terrify you, Traeger, so we'll leave it the same. Five to one. Good. I'll put 500 against horse. Mark it down. I'll show you. Ah, let's see. That's 500. 500, right. Against horse cut. H-O-S-S. Now, you be sure to be here tomorrow after the contest, Oh, won't don't you? you worry. I'll be here with a new and bigger wallet. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. been making more bets of that tin horn? Shh. Keep your voice down. I don't want him to hear you. He's liable to try to change his mind. Oh, did I trap him? Did I trap him into a bet? <laughs> what kind of trap? See, I figure when Traeger hears you're entering the contest, he's going to start watching on the bets with Big Ed. So I play like I'm frightened. You see, I'm worried about the competition. So I get into bed. Joel, just how much you got riding on this contest, anyhow? If Big Ed loses, I get $500. If you win, I get another $500. 500 and 500 that's the 1000 I need for Adam, plus the 500 you get for winning the contest. We split that down the middle, and it's a nice little profit for both of us. Yeah, yeah. What happens if I lose and Big Ed wins? Don't talk that way. It makes me upset. Yeah? Well, you just stay upset until you can examine the other side of that coin. Well, if Big Ed wins, I lose a hundred dollars. Yeah. If Big Ed wins, that means I lose, don't it? Then what? Twenty, twenty-five, hundred. dollars plus that other. You are you crazy? Can you stop talking that way. Don't talk that way. Think how nice it's going to be when I win all that money. Look what you're doing. You're making me nervous. Sam, let me have another beer. Hey, uh, yeah, me too, Sam. Just for my nose. No, 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 no. A glass of water. What? You heard me. A glass of water. Look, horse, beer has hops in it. It's filling. It's fattening. Now, no beer. Water. Water. Carrots and celery. You're trying to kill me, ain't you, Joe? Well, you, keep, you, you keep your voice down. You know that little Joe? He's a lot smarter than he looks. Yeah, but not as smart as you, Trigger. Yeah. Prettier, maybe, but not as smart. <laughs> <laughs> you bet he ain't as smart as I am. Now, listen. <laughs> Come on, finish your water. Did you get that window pane? Jake didn't have no more of them. He what? He didn't have no more of them. After I bought that one yesterday, the one you busted, he ran out. He said he'd had a big run on them. Oh, no. Oh, Pa's gonna have my hide. Well, I, I guess that's kind of my fault, little Joe. What? The window panes. You know the rooms I got upstairs? Well, I've been renting them out to cow hands that can't afford the hotel. Well, a couple of them got to whooping it up a few nights ago and broke five of them, so I had to go over Jake's and... Replace them. 
Sam will buy a window pane from you. I already got him setting the windows. All right, I'll take it out of the window. Then how am I going to rent a room? Hey, uh, how long did Jake say to be before he got another window pane? He said it'd be at least a week. Sam, what do you get a night for the rooms? 50 cents. All right. I'll buy the window pane from you. I'll pay you 50 cents a night till Jake gets the new window panes in. A deal? <laughs> if it means that much to you. <laughs> right. Be right down. Be strong, Hoss. It ain't easy on water, Joe. Uh. Sam, is this the strongest water you got? Hi, Lily. A little early for work, ain't you? You run such a lovely place here, Sam. I just can't resist it. Hello, Hoss. Howdy, Miss Lily. What you got in the package? You remember your birthday last month, Sam, when I forgot to get you a present? Oh, that was all right, Lily. I didn't mind. Oh, well, I did. And it's been bothering me ever since. So today I got you a present. Got it from Mrs. Hawkins. It's her specialty. What time is it? Lemon cream meringue. I'd like you to have the first bite. Lily, that is the tastiest pie I ever ate. I sure appreciate this. I, I surely do. I'll go get some plates. How about you, Hoss? No, no, thank you, Lily. What, Hoss? What's the matter? You're not sick or something, are you? Well, I've seen you turn down the best-looking girl in here, but, but never something to eat. Oh, come on, baby, for Sam's birthday. Hmm? Now, now, cut that out, Lily. Why? What's wrong with a little bit of pie? <laughs> Well, I promised little Joe, see? What's he got to do with it? Don't worry. We'll save him some. No, that, that ain't it. Oh, come on, honey. If not for Sam, then do it for Lil. Huh, please? What's the big idea? Oh, that's what I like to know. What is the big idea? Where'd the pie come from? I bought it for Sam. For his birthday, if it's any of your business. Sam's birthday, my foot. You're working for Traeger, aren't you? I haven't got the slightest idea what you're talking about. Well, the heck you don't. You've been going with Traeger ever since he came into town. He paid you to tempt my brother, didn't he? I'm not that type of girl. You're no pie maker either, Jezebel. Why, the nerve. No, Lily! <laughs> Sam, I need another pain. That means rent on another room. Money is getting to mean less and less to me all the time. Will you leave it alone? Come on, weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carter, I say, take fence to upper pasture. Chop, chop. All right, all right. Oh, 
Joe, Mo wants to get that fencing up for pasture. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. I want to find a nice, safe place for this. Well, hurry up. It's going to be dark before we get back. Okay. Put my horse up. I'm going to tuck it out. Right, Paul. Oh, come on, horse. Shake a leg down from there. That's about all I can do. I'm so fired to tuck it out from all that diet, I'm going to go in the house and lay me down on that sofa. The sofa? Holy Toledo, the sofa! Kitchen, trying to steal some food? Joe, my belly's so dang empty, it's killing me. Oh! And it's gonna stay that way until after the contest tomorrow. Yes, and it's a dang good thing it is tomorrow. One more night like this, and you both be out in the barn sleeping there. Now listen to me. Get to bed! <sighs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hurry up, fellas. Let's go. Yeah, we're coming, Pa. What's that for? Huh? Oh, that's for the paint of glass. Well, it'd be cheaper to go ahead and buy a whole glass factory. Well, after you win that contest today, Hoss, I just might be able to afford a whole glass factory. Here, lie down, rest. That's it. I want him to save his strength for the contest. Well, this I gotta see. She'll be some compensation for the last few days anyway. <laughs> Contestants here, we can begin. The rules are simple. The man who eats the most flapjacks in an hour wins. The hotel will keep him coming from the kitchen. All right, what are you doing here? You couldn't be over a 15 or 20 flapjack man. Well, you see, Hoss, my wife's been away visiting her sister, and I ain't been eating so good. So I figured this here would be a good chance to store up. <laughs> Plain or with something on them, any way you want. Now, if you'll all be seated and ready, 
We'll begin. One, two, three, go! Let us go! Take your time, you got a long time. Don't worry about the competition, just take it easy. Come on, boy, just keep thinking of that five hundred dollars. Just keep thinking about it now. Go ahead, boy. Uh, Joseph. Yep. Joseph, this contest is taking exactly an hour, so let's you and I get some hands done in the meantime, huh? Oh, Papa, don't, don't you think I ought to stay with Hossie? He might need some syrup or something. Oh, the hotel provides all those services. I want to get over to the post office, see if there's any mail from Adam, and you might try persuading Jake to open up his shop long enough to get that window pane. Oh, he hasn't got any left. Huh? Then why'd you bring that mattress? Oh, I've been going over and getting him from Sam at the saloon. He's got a couple extra. Huh? Well, you just get over to that saloon and get an extra window pane, huh? I'll meet you back here. All right, Come on, put away, Howdy, Mr. Traeger. Howdy. Be with you in a moment. No hurry. How's the contest going? Just fine. I do believe the whole town's out there watching. Yes, I know. I was counting on watching it myself when the bank closed at noon, but they went up to starting time. Yeah, I know. All right, sir, now what can I do for you? Well, you can put the money in this here valise. What? You holding up this bank? And shoot the bank if I have to. Now, you just do as I tell you, and you won't get hurt. What's that, boss? It's my secret weapon, Art. Try it. Ah! Ain't got enough to go around. Boss. Qualified. It's one of Drager's tricks. Come on! Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Now sit down and start eating. Just go to any lengths to, to break a window pane, won't you? <laughs> Good job, boy. Good job. Oh, thanks. Well, Traeger robbed the bank. He was trying to get away. He what? Traeger robbed the bank. He was trying to get away. You mean he's a crook? Sure. You saved the bank thousands of dollars, boy. <laughs> yeah, but now I can't collect my bet. You just earned yourself a $500 reward. Come over to the bank and pick it up. Joe, did you hear that? $500. 
Yeah, but that's only half the loaf, Hoss. Listen, that was a pretty slick job you almost got away with there. Now, you are no ordinary bank robber, are you? What's your real name? Come on, you might as well tell us. We're going to find out anyway as soon as we get you over to jail. Sure. Cunningham. Cunningham? Ain't there a price on your head? Best there is for bank robbing, $500. Hey, Joe, did you hear that? Hey, this is your lucky day, Joe. $500. That's 500 plus another 500 That's 1000 any way you look at it. And the $500 you want for winning a pancake. Yeah, hey, Sam, where's my $500 at? You haven't won yet, Hoss. There's still one contestant at the table. Ira is still at the table. And in the remaining time, if he eats more than you, he wins. That dang Ira. He ain't no bigger than my leg. Yeah. All right, let's get this Jasper off to jail. Well, tough luck, brother. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Huh? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going over to jail, see about my reward. Uh -huh. First things first. But, but Pa, what's more important than my reward? A window pane. Oh, now, come on, Pa. For crying out loud, you don't expect me to drop everything that's important just to get a... A window pane. A window pane. <laughs> Oh, by the way, got a letter from Adam. He's coming in on today's stage. That little Joe, he made it just in time. What? Nothing, Paul, nothing. Hi, little Joe. Hey, what was all that shooting about? Yeah, well, the shooting was at your boyfriend, Traeger. He was robbing the bank while everybody else was at the contest. No. How about that? Can't trust nobody no more. Hey, what's that? Little trinket that bank robber gave me. Probably a phony. Yeah. Let me see that. Yeah. Oh. I told you. A phony. Priceless ruby, he said. you break this time? Hmm? A, a ruby. <laughs> That's your brother Adam's ruby. Yeah, they, they stole it from me the other night. They stole it? Here comes the stage, boy. Look, Joseph, your brother Adam is in that stage. I sure don't envy you the job of having to tell him that they stole his valuable ruby. His what? What? But this isn't a valuable ruby. It's a phony. I was worried about having to give Adam a thousand dollars. I have to give him anything. It's nothing. You know your brother Adam. He's going to want that ruby or whatever he paid for it in hard cash. Oh. There he is now. Well, Ira, it looks like you've done it. I'm so full, I'm gonna bust, Hoss. Can't stop now, just ten more minutes, and if you finish that plate, you win the whole contest. I'm, I'm gonna hate flapjacks the rest of my life. I just can't eat another bite. Oh, sure you can. Look, look, Ira, since little Joe's all set, I, I ain't got no interest in winning this contest no more, so I'm gonna give you my secret weapon. Yes, sir. You see, what happened, if, if you eat all them sugars and them syrups, it gets monotonous. A man needs to shake up his taste buds every once in a while with something like this. What is it? Vinegar. Mm. Ira? Ira? Thank you. By the way, you get that package I wrote you about? Oh, yeah, well, uh... As a matter of fact, uh... Oh, what's wrong? Didn't it arrive? Yeah, yeah, it arrived. I'll buy it from you for $1,000. Well, now, what in the world would you want a ruby for? Oh, haven't you heard? Uh, little Joe's become a collector of uh, rubies and window panes. Well, you're out of luck if you want my ruby. man on the stage offered me 1500 
What? Now give me the ruby or $1,500. Howdy, Adam. Hey. Hey, uh, I'm out with Ira. Old, uh, poor little old Ira took sick. Hey, hey, you mean you won the contest? Yeah, yeah, I guess I did at that. What contest? Uh, what are you talking about? Well, what they're talking about, at least, uh, what little Joe's talking about, I think, is, uh, money. So Adam here wants, uh, $1,500 for that ruby. Huh? That's what the man said, $1,500. I'm, I'm $500 short. So, what you want is my contest money, right, Joe? Right. Well, the way I figured, Joe, what you already owe me, and Sam the bartender. Figure it'll take you at least a year to just get even. I reckon that'll be a good lesson for you, little brother. Oh, I doubt that very much. As a matter of fact, I'd be willing to make a little wager that your young brother here takes more than a year to pay you off. Oh, yeah? You giving any odds? What was that? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I, I was only kidding you, Pa. <laughs> just a joke. You know, you know I, don't, I don't bet. Well, of course you don't bet. I know that. <laughs> But what was that you said uh, a little while ago when Mr. Traeger was taken into custody about uh, a bet being ruined? And while we're at it, young fella, what about these poker playing activities of yours? Uh, and uh, it... Pa, Pa, why don't we, uh, why don't we just talk about that later? I got a lot of important things to do. I, I gotta get that window pane, and I know that's, that's important. Oh, hello. I, I know you want that window pane, and I'm gonna get it. I promise you. Oh, I'm gonna get it, and uh, I'm gonna get it fixed, too, Pa. I'm gonna fix it. I got a new stallion out to my place. Tried to bust him. He blamed near busted me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to learn to leave the bad ones to the good riders? <laughs> well, his name fooled me. Mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that a name for a horse that's half meanest and another half even meaner? Hey, Doc, when are you going to come out and have supper with us? Thanks, Mr. Cartwright, but I got a lot of things to do out at the ranch, and, well, I can't nothing drag me away till they're done. Come on, now. There's other things in life besides running that spread of yours. Well, yeah, like what? I like, like having supper with friends or playing a little poker, dancing with some girls. If you had a spread as big as Tuck's here, you wouldn't have any time for that dancing and poker play. Tuck, come on out. You're always welcome out at the Ponderosa. Thank you. Really, how's Lake feeling? Oh, tolerable, tolerable. Just tolerable, huh? <laughs> How come you're so spruced up? I'm gonna meet some friends of Pies from back east. Philadelphia. I figured with some of the riffraff running around the street here, I gotta try to make a good impression. Well... The tie don't help that much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Oh. Ben! <laughs> ben Cartwright, you old... Son of a gun. <laughs> How are you, Mart? <laughs> Great. You Good look wonderful. You. Feel wonderful? You look wonderful yourself. It's my, my youngest boy. Little Joe, it's Mr. Melvany. Mr. Melvany, a pleasure to meet you. I heard an awful son. lot about the old days from Bob. <laughs> Lucy Dale. Lucy, this is Ben Cartwright and his son, Little Joe, my daughter, Lucinda. Well, Miss Lucinda, what a pleasure. Welcome to Virginia City and to the Ponderosa. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Listen, let me get the bags for you. Which ones are they? Oh, let me give a hand. No, oh, that's all right. I got it. All right. Here they are right here. These three? That's it. Martin. Martin, you know, I can't believe it's been that long since we've seen each other. Oh, it is, Ben. The gray in our hair should prove that. <laughs> sure does. Hey. You didn't tell me about her. Todd, I thought you were only interested in meeting horses. Ah. Uh. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Joe. 
All right, didn't have too dusty a trip, did you? No, Ryan trip all the way. Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to accept that kind invitation of yours for supper uh, tonight. Oh, uh, well, uh, Tuck, uh, I thought you said that nothing could ever get you away from that ranch of yours. What ranch? In that case, we'll, uh, we'll expect you tonight. St. Louis to go back east like it was yesterday. Martin, it can't be 28 years. It is, though, Ben. <coughs> it is. I never thought when I left I'd be corralled in Philadelphia, a place I'd never even heard of. Well, I'm sure glad to see that you've done so well. Yes, I've made some money. You know, the best thing that ever happened to me, though, was meeting Ada there and not having Lucy. That was Ada. Beautiful woman. Yes, she was. All the way. I lost Ada when Lucy was just five. Ben, you have no idea what it is to raise a child all by yourself. Oh, of course I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, you're talking about boys. I mean a woman child. I tell you, Ben, the human female filly is a woman grown down instead of up. She's just as hard to make out as her big sister. Look, she's always been a puzzle to me. Well, that's because you, you spoil the heck out of her. An only child, a girl. No, that's, that's not what bothers me, Ben. See, Lucy was a sickly child. She spent a good many years in bed. And I'd take it easy for a long time after that. Well, as a result, she found... All of her companionship in books instead of in people. Now that she's grown and healthy, she still does. Mostly poetry and romantic novels. Well, you know, young girls and romantic novels go together like strawberries and cream. Yes, but Lucy gets all of her ideas of life out of these books. She hardly ever comes down to bedrock. I thought that out here, we you still have to claw some just to stay alive, she might just come down to Earth. And neither of you have read this latest book by Mr. Charles Dickens. Don't, I mean. Well, I suppose it is understandable. Tale of Two Cities was only published this year. Probably hasn't reached the Virginia City bookstores yet. The bookstores? Yeah, the, the bookstores. Miss Lucinda, I'd sure admire to read it. Well, I'd be very happy to lend it to you. As soon as I finish reading it. Again. <laughs> oh, I'm especially fond of Sidney Carton. Friend of yours? Oh, you are silly. Well, he's a person in the book. Well, the, the hero, a, a ne'er do well, a, a drunkard who nobly redeems himself. Uh, I didn't know a, a souse, a, a drunk, uh, could be a book hero. Oh, he was a wonderful hero. You see, Sidney Carton was in love with a beautiful woman by the name of Lucy Manette. I bet she ain't any prettier than you are. Miss Lucinda. Thank you. All my friends call me Lucy. I hope you both will. 
You just talked us into it. <laughs> tell, tell us more about Lucy, uh, the other one. Well, Lucy Manette was in love with a handsome man by the name of Charles Darnay. But Charles was in prison, and they were just about to execute him. Oh, but Sidney Carton loved Lucy so much. Do you know what he did? No, tell me. He sneaked into Charles Darnay's cell, drugged him senseless, and took his place in prison. And died in his stead. Was that a pretty nearsighted guard if he couldn't tell the difference between them? Oh, but they looked alike. Now, do you know what Sidney Carton said just as they were about to execute him? What his very last words were? No, what were they? It's so long, I guess. Oh, nobody ever says so long in a book by Mr. Charles Dickens. Well, not when they're about to die, anyway. No, what he said was, it is a far, far better thing I do than anything I have ever done. Isn't that a beautiful epitaph? No, I'm sorry. I think the whole thing is pretty silly. What? Well, the way I look at it, this fellow would have been a lot better off if he just let well enough alone. His rival dies, and he has a girl he's in love with. Apparently, you don't understand this kind of nobility. This, this was an, an ideal sort of love. Oh, come on. There's a big difference between being noble and being stupid. Listen. If Lucy says something's noble, then it's downright noble. And don't you go saying anything she says is stupid. Look, I'm not arguing with Lucy. I'm arguing with this for this fella Dickens, the guy who wrote the book. What are you taking up for Dickens or something? Don't you start weaseling. Who's weaseling? He ain't here, and she is. And if she says something is noble, it is. And don't say anything she says is silly. Look, if I want to say that something is silly that this guy Dickens says, or he's stupid, or anything I want to say, I'm going to say it. Whether it's Dickens or this guy Carton or, or Napoleon Bonaparte, if I want to say it. Joseph, supper's ready. <laughs> I'm sure that Adam and Hoss are so late. Of course, they're coming a long way. I can hardly wait to see the sights around here. I'd sure admire to show you myself. Be an honor. I'm sorry, Tuck, but Lucy already has a guide. Me. I'd be delighted to have two such exceptional guides. Uh, what do you think you'd like to see? Now, Adam and Hoss are doing some branding down at the South Creek. Oh, no, thank you. I mean... Oh, well, I've heard about branding. I... I don't think I'd enjoy it. Yeah, I don't suppose I'd be too interesting for a young lady. Mm. How about Indian's grief? Yeah, that's a wonderful idea. Just the ticket. What is it? It's just an old Indian landmark. Oh, now, wait a minute, Joe. It's more than just an old Indian landmark. It's probably the most romantic spot around here. Really? Oh, please tell me about it. Well, see, the Indians... But it's the Pius. Believe that uh, the great chief is buried at Indian's grief. They mourn him. Because according to their legend, at the very beginning of time, the great Manitou, that is the, the, the great spirit, visited his wrath upon them. And uh, after many men, women, and children had died, the medicine men told the chief that the only way that the great Manitou could be appeased would be if the chief sacrificed his eldest son to him. No. Well, the, the chief prayed to the great Manitou and asked that he be allowed to take the place of his son. He dressed himself in his finest garments and he mounted his favorite horse. And he rode to the very top, the highest cliff, and he leaped off. What a beautiful story. The, uh, the pipes are very superstitious about Indian's grief. They never walk around the rocks there. It's taboo. They don't mind white men doing it, but uh, it's sacrilege for a pirate. Well, Lucy, dear, there's the romantic west you've been looking for. Oh, I can hardly wait to see it. When can we go? Well, I you... think... We... Well, if you really want to go... Seeing I... it, it was my idea. 
I'll take you there tomorrow myself. Mm. How about some more cake? Oh, no. Not for me. There you are. <laughs> Oh, sorry, we're late. Got held up. Oh, come on in and sit down and have something. Uh, Hoss and Adam, my two sons, meet our guests, Miss Lucinda Melvaney. Hey, country around here is getting prettier all the time. And uh, I'd like you to meet the father of the country, my old friend, Mr. Martin Melvaney. Happy to meet you, sir. Hoss, Adam. Well, how's the branding coming along? Oh, fine, boy. A bunch of renegade pirates don't show up. They around here now? Well, sort of close by, it seems. A few days ago, they killed a couple of fellers and a woman over at Savage Station. Day before yesterday, they killed a man and a little 11-year-old boy out at the Smiths. Apparently, they were all young bucks. One of the men at Smiths recognized the leader. I guess who it was, Joe. Who? Oh. Your old friend, Sharp Tongue. What? Who is Sharp Tongue? He's, uh, he's an Indian boy I used to go to school with. His father wanted him to learn the ways of the white man. I'm afraid it didn't work out. Why? Was he an evil little boy? No, he was an Indian. Afraid children borrow the thinking of their parents. Made it worse, he was a proud Indian. Me, I admired him for it. He did more than that, miss. More than once, little Joe got beat up defending him. My little Joe. It's a terribly noble thing to do. Why, he was just my friend. I wish you'd had more friends. Those murders stem all the way back to that little schoolhouse, I'm afraid. It's just not fair that you should take me to see Indians grief now. You promised days ago, and here you are, you're just backing down in your promise. I'm I'm losing my patience with both of you. But Lucy, you're gonna have to be patient a little bit longer. It's wise till those renegade Indians are out of this part of the country. It's not safe until then. We got time. You've been here less than a week. <laughs> really? You two, you're so silly. Afraid of a few frightened Indians. And James Finnemar Cooper's book, The Last of the Mohicans, why... Come on, Lucy, not another book writer. These are not storybook Indians. They're real and they're dangerous. They're not going to set you up as some great white princess and worship you. No matter what you've read in books, because these Indians have not read the same books. You don't have, you don't have to be angry with me. That's right. You ain't got no call to rear up and stomp on her like that. Oh, come on, Tuck. We've both seen what these renegades do to white women. It's not pretty. Now, we're not going until it's safe, and that's all there is to it. He's right. They ain't playing games. Hey, come on, are we still friends? Sure we are. I guess I did jump on you a little quick, I'm sorry. Ready to go? Yeah. Hey, wait a sec. It looks like a little stone bruise. Be all right tomorrow. Lucy, you'll have to ride with me now. Slow down a minute. My horse has got a gait like a rocking chair. Lucy's going to be a lot more comfortable back of me. You got to think of her. You know, Tuck, I just don't believe you. You're, you're so noble. You know, you make that fellow sit cart and look like, like a tin horn. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do, though. We'll flip a coin for it. Let me see that there coin. If you can't trust your friends, who can you trust? Call it in the air. Head. <laughs> Doggone. Uh, 
Little Joe, you just hang on to that there lucky coin. <laughs> tuck, tuck, tuck. That, that's the lame horse. Tuck, and any time you're ready. Lucy. Bye, Dad. Salon. You really think you're being fair to Tuck? Tuck's whole life has been the ranch. Ever since he was a little boy before his folks died, that's all he's thought about. Never even had a girl of his own. And all of a sudden, you come along, and he falls for you. I like Tuck. I like him very much. Everybody likes Tuck. There's a big difference between like and the way he feels about you. Seem to be very sure that I couldn't learn to return that love. You and Tuck? No. You don't have anything in common. Nothing at all, but it doesn't matter to Tuck because he loves you. You know, to him, you're not even a girl. You're, you're a princess out of a storybook. Oh, little Joe. Sometimes a girl wants to be treated like a princess. Why don't you come along with us? We're going out to Timberwolf Mine. We sure wish you would. We haven't seen near enough of you. Now I understand you'll be leaving for home in a couple of days. Going home? I'm sorry, dear. I meant to tell you. We're going to have to leave sooner than we planned. Timberwolf people are insisting that I go back east immediately to organize a mining syndicate. I understand, Daddy. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I, I hope you'll excuse me. I, I'm really very tired. I, I think I'll just stay here and rest. Of course. You take care, dear. Here. We'll see it. Well, we're gonna miss you. Thank you. Well, I miss everything. Gee, I'm afraid my whole morning's pretty well taken up. I have to deliver some supplies to my brothers down in South Creek. Of course, I could stay here a little while with you if you wanted me to. Oh, no, no, please. I, I think I'll just stay at home and catch up on some reading I have. Well, better be on my way. You sure you don't want me to stay with you? 
No, no, please. Okay. I'll see you later. Zack. <laughs> oh, no, don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, I tried to bust Mama's boy this morning. That dang horse thrown me again. Uh, getting tiresome him step on the same foot. You'd think he'd want some variety. <laughs> yeah, I noticed it didn't stop you from courting Lucy, though. Where is Lucy? She's in the house, isn't she? Oh, I figured she's with you. The horse she's been riding is gone. It's funny. She said she's going to stay around the house and read. Yeah, one of the hands must have taken her horse. She's probably upstairs reading one of her romantic stories in some kind of a trance. Hey, Lucy! <whistles> hey, Lucy! Now, knowing that girl, she's probably hiding somewhere under the furniture laughing about it. Hey, Lucy, are you in the kitchen? What is it? It's a note from Lucy. When I learned we were going home in a couple of days, I just couldn't leave without seeing Indian's grief. Don't worry. To the way we warned her. <laughs> well, we'll just go fetch her. She's probably sitting up there in that rock by herself. Quiet renegades don't find her first. I'll get the horses. I'll leave a note for Pa. Tell him where we're going. Indians grief. Sharp tongue. Joe Cartwright. It's been a long time. Be. 
I see you've changed your name, Sharp Tongue. Now they call you he who scares women. You used to speak for me, Cartwright. Now you speak against me. I used to speak for the man who was my friend. I don't know you anymore. I have changed. I no longer take insults. I no longer take beatings. I no longer am a boy in the white man's school. So now you spend the rest of your life killing innocent people for the insults of ignorant children. I was a child, too. You're not a child anymore. You know, you once told me that the ways of the Indian were better and wiser than those of the white man. Is this how you prove it? By burning, by murdering? By proving that you're worse than the worst of us. Paiute's still better than white man. You'll see. The only thing I'll see is you hanging from the end of a rope. No. I saw this shirt in a dream. When I woke, I made shirt, just like in dream. As long as I wear shirt, nothing evil can happen to me. Manito himself promised it in the dream. Because you were once my friend, now I do more for you, Cartwright, than white man would if he were on the warpath and had Paiute as prisoner. You are free. Go. She's my woman. He's my friend, as we were friends in school. Let them go, too. She is pretty for a white woman. but too small for work. Two times, Cartwright, you try to save me from beating by other boys, and you are beaten with me. I show you I am better than white men. For those two beatings, I give you two lives, yours and one other. Choose. What are you waiting for? Take her with you. Go on. Please. Come on. Stop! Go away with him, Lucy. Please. I'll be all right. <laughs> Go quickly, Cartwright, and do not come back. The next time we meet, remember, I will owe you nothing. Sharp tongue can always change his mind. It's an old Indian game. He gets a head start, length of a bow shot. If he can outrun him, he lives. 
And if not, he dies. Kawina! You think you can find your way back? All right, then get going. He can't die now. I love him, little Joe. I, I love him. Lucy, listen to me. If you love him, then do what I say. I left a note for Pa. He knows where we are. You'll probably meet him on the way back. Tell him what's happening and tell him to hurry. Now go on. When does Sharp Tongue play woman's sport? I told you the next time we meet, I would kill you. This is woman's sport. My friend's leg is hurt. He can't run. If you want sport worthy of a warrior, let me take his place. Let him go free. And try to kill me if you can. I could always outfight you and outrun you. I still can. You know the game. You will have no weapon. I know the game. If you get away alive, he lives. But if you don't, he dies too. Go, Cartwright. What's going on? I'm taking your place. You can't do it. With that leg, you wouldn't have a chance. Now get going. Let's see if Lucy's in her room. Martin. Yes, Ben? Lucy's not in the room. What? According to Little Joe's note here, she was headed for Indian's grief. Yeah, the renegade pirates were seen around there. Shall we get some more men? No, there's no place for that. Let's go.
Sharp tongue. The spirit of the great chief will destroy you. If you fight on his burial grounds. My shirt will protect me. Uno Hashi. Cartwright, now I kill you. You're right, son. You're all right. Yeah, but I'm fine. Yeah, I had to. I had to kill Sharp Tongue. Rest of his braves rode off towards the reservation. Well, without Sharp Tongue, they have no leader, no purpose. Let's go home. Little Joe. Thank you, son. Thank you very much. Me too. Little Joe. I'm sorry that my foolish romantic curiosity almost got you killed. But you... You were as noble as Sidney Carton. Maybe you'll know the difference now between... Living in what you read in storybooks. Doesn't the best man get a kiss from the bride? <laughs> now, what about the ushers? Hey, you got your kiss back at the wedding. Oh, wait a minute. When you got a whole gold mine, you ain't gonna be chinchy over a couple of little nuggets, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Take your nuggets and make them small. Look, 
Good luck. Thank you, little Joe. Little Joe, I've learned my lesson. Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to be a, a good wife to him. I'm going to cook for him. I'm going to be practical. I'm... I'm going to even learn to sew and, and, and make my own clothes. I know you will. All right, little Joe. Our turn now. <laughs> little Joe, I'd admire having a word with you. For sure, Brago. Excuse me, huh? What's up? I just want you to know, I especially appreciate your saving me. Oh, come on, forget it. What kind of you being in love with Lucy yourself? What? I realize you didn't want to own up to it out there at Indian's Grief, but I know the truth. And I know it took a lot to save the life of a fella who was in love with your best girl. Who did that? The, no. Listen, you did exactly what that carton hombre did in that there book of Lucy's. Are you out of your head? I didn't... Do Don't you fret. I ain't gonna tell anybody, especially Lucy. Doug, come on. Hey, Doug, that stage is ready. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Tuck, my very best wishes. Thank you. I don't. Pop! <laughs> Take good care of her, Tuck. I will. Watch your head. Let her go. Bye. Bye. What's the matter, General? Hmm? What's the matter? I just can't believe it. She's starting to think like him, and he's starting to think like her. Well, that's good. They say that compromise is the secret of a happy marriage. Yeah, but they just got married. Well, I mean, can you picture it a year from now? Huh. He'll be sitting there reading Dickens, and she'll be busting horses. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, don't go too far away. We are leaving very soon. Ay, they have such spirit. Fools. Idiots. Papa, why do you allow them to come with us? Chasing Elena all over Nevada. Oh, this guy's... Now, Margarita, they do no harm. Come on, and Papa, look at the dust. All Spaniards are loco. If Don Luis is as stupid as those two, I'd not marry him. Calmete, calmete. Oh. Ben! Ben! Ben Cartwright! Down, Miguel! Senor! Are you all right? Do you think this is my normal way of disembarking? Of course I'm not all right. Help me up. Why do you gape and take down the luggage? Howdy, ma'am. My name is Hoss. This is my little brother, Joe. Well, why do you make conversation? I don't care what your name is. Take down the luggage. That's your job, no? Well, you heard what the lady said. Take down the luggage. Okay. Hey, Papa. They are not served. Well. Ben, my older daughter, Margarita. Senor Cartwright. Senorita, welcome to the Ponderosa. Senor. And this is Adam? Yes, we've met. Joe and Hoss. My sons. Your sons? It is just as well they would make very bad servants. <laughs> well, uh, let's get to the ranch. <laughs> Why do you gape? Take down the luggage.
salud, amigo. To old times. The good old times. You're not staying nearly long enough, Miguel. See, amigo, not long enough for either of us. But we still have a long way to travel, and, and Margarita is most anxious to meet the man she's going to marry. Oh, you mean they haven't met yet? Well, please understand, madam. It is our custom that the father arrange these things for his daughters. With Elena, there is no problem, but Margarita, I... Ah, Ben, how often I have envied you, your sons. Well, tell you, Miguel, I'm quite certain that my sons wouldn't want me to arrange any of their marriages, but there are sure times when I'd like to give it a try. <laughs> Margarita, Margarita. Always the same. Perdóname. No, 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 no lo tires. No. Margarita, ¿qué te pasa? Tengo muchas rabia. ¿Por qué? Because they live with us day and night, night and day, dance and sing. I cannot even have chocolate in peace. Margarita, are... no, 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 hablas así. Somos uh, caballeros. Caballeros. Margarita. Mono. Smashing up my good china. Margarita. Margarita. Por favor, querida. Get out. They do not have to live just because you say so. I do Mar... not have to live with your two buffoons. Margarita, no te de tanta rabia. Acuérdate, you may turn out to be my sister-in-law. You, you, my brother. No, no. Not today. Da! Before have I seen her so silent. <laughs> you are to be congratulated. Our guest settled for the night? Yes, finally. Miguel says she's always been like this. Can't do a thing with her. I think he's afraid he'll never be able to marry her off. And with good reason. Come in. Senores. Oh, come in, gentlemen. Gracias. Gracias. Senor Adam. Senor Adam, we wish to express our admiration. For what you did this afternoon, senor. You actually silenced Margarita. And that was a true miracle. There's the voice of wisdom. I lose my temper and he calls it a miracle. No, but we are serious, senor. We love the little Elena. Si, sí, and, and we would like to marry her. Both of you? Uh, si. Sí. Sí. But there's one little problem. Only one? Uh, Don Miguel, he requires that Margarita be married primero. Oh. If you could only gentle her a little. <laughs> so that when they meet, this Don Luis will not run away like all the others. The answer, senores, is no. Why not, big brother? You're pretty good at gentle and wild horses. <laughs> sure, it might turn out to be fun. You two stay out of this. I hope I do not interrupt. It's all right, senorita, I was just leaving. Senor, por favor, you have to help us. Why don't you help us? I can understand I could not help but hear you. I see that, like me, no one else can sleep, eh?
Please, Adam. Allow me to speak. Well, sir. Adam, Luis Santana is our last hope. Margarita has frightened all the others away. One little thing that is not perfect, she explodes and whoosh, they disappear. Es verdad, señor Adam. Whoosh. If I permit Elena to marry before her older sister, the disgrace will make Margarita so full of fury that... Adam, have pity. Please, Senor Adam. Please, Senor Adam, have pity. Please, Senor Adam, por favor, oh, pity. Please, please, Senor Adam, you're the only one that can sell. Please, please, Adam. Adam. Adam, looks like you got a regular please. Jim Danny prayer meeting going for you there, big brother. <laughs> get up, get up, get up. What kind of crazy eye? What do you want me to do? Smack her every time she's bad, which is most of the time? Uh, perhaps this will help, Adam. I found it this afternoon. A play by your Englishman, Senor Shakespeare. Taming of the Shrew. You might have known. Um, how did Shakespeare put it, Adam? Kill her with kindness. Kindness with that. Lovely lady. Silencio! Silencio! You have awakened me. I want to sleep. Ahora. That means now. You're right. She is a problem. But like you said, She's your problem, not mine. Oh, get up. <laughs> and then we were walking down the street in Juarez, and we were both in drag. But he was... oh, good morning. I hope you slept well, Margarita. I have not. First there is the noise, then there is something wrong with that bed. I'm sorry. It's crooked, it leans. I had to hold on all night long to keep from slipping to the bottom. <laughs> it is not so funny, Elaine. I could not close my eyes. Well, first thing after breakfast, I'll take a look at it. Let's see. I ask for chocolate, I get coffee. Margarita, por favor. Eh? Oh, fuck! It is very lucky for you, it's cold. I am going right. Joe, saddle a horse and go with her. Yes, sir. Oh, pobre de me. Manuel and Carlos are taking me riding. Margarita will run into them. Perdone me. To fatherhood. Uh, no, 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 no. First to marriage, I hope. Eh? <laughs> I will take that horse. Margarita, these horses are for Elena and us. I'll get another horse. Stand aside. When I'm afraid we're going to get another horse. Tell me something, Elena. You want your sister to marry that Santana fellow, and so do your young men, and so does your father, but... But how does Margarita feel about all this? She has much pride, Senor Adam. Too much pride to admit to her private dreams. Even to me. But she is my sister, and I know her very well. Like, like all women, she longs for the beauty of a man's love. The sweet delight of a child in her arms. As I do, senor. It is a great pity. A pity. And so you push and push. Did you ever stop to think, Elena, that maybe you and everybody else might have just pushed Margarita to desperation? Perhaps we are selfish, senor Adam. But it is not only selfishness. We believe that Margarita could for, fulfill a man to running over. 
We all hope very much for her sake that Don Luis will be that man. Mighty pretty, ma'am. I sure wish I could play like that. Gracias. Perhaps you can, senor horse. Here. You try. <laughs> now, um, you put your fingers, dos. Uh, this is a E chord, now strong. Fingers here, here, good. Now strong. No, this large onion is the fingers of a bear. Huh? I said we must uh, uh, have patience uh, uh, with the instrument. <laughs> Let me show you now. <laughs> it's impossible. Margarita. Dang woman I ever did see. Out of my toy. <laughs> that wouldn't happen to be my guitar. Adam. My new guitar? Adam. The one I sent all the way to New York for? Hey, you sure did. See that? It's got New York right there inside. Yeah, I see it. I'm sorry, Adam, but as you said, she's a problem to everybody. All the way from New York. My new guitar. Amid this hurley I intend that all is done in reverent care of her. And in conclusion, she shall watch all night. this morning. Did you sleep well? How can one sleep on the floor? On the floor? Why, was there something wrong with your bed? This stupid evil thing collapsed. I could not put it together. Well, I fixed it myself uh, right after you complained. 
You fixed it, senor? Yes, uh, you should have called me when it collapsed. Called? Where were you when I called? Oh, you did call. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I... I didn't hear a thing. I... I must have been sleeping like a baby. Listen, senor, if you think it is very funny to spend the whole night on the floor... Uh, don't lose your temper so early in the morning. You won't have any left for the rest of the day. Um, why don't you have some eggs? I fixed them myself. What are these? Eggs from a dodo bird? They taste like leather. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm not very much of a cook. Uh, maybe you would like to have some chocolate. <laughs> you see, I remembered that uh, you don't like coffee. It's cold. Don't you even know how to make chocolate? Oh, I am sorry, senorita. I, I am truly sorry. I I'll heat it up. Is there nothing ever right in this house? The bed, the food. What have you done? Oh, I am so sorry. I... Uh... Fortunately for you, it's it's cold. Maybe some water will help. You're making it worse! Oh, how can anyone be so stupid? It's not easy. Idiot, it's a conspiracy! Margarita? Okay. Have you slept at all this night? No. Thanks to Senor Adam, the bed fixer. I... I think he hates me. Oh, no, Margarita. On the contrary. He's very simpatico to you. <laughs> he thinks, perhaps, that Papa and I have pushed you too hard towards marriage. He does. What business is that of his? How dare he express an opinion? Because, as I said, he is very simpatico to you, as most men would be if only you would let them. You! You permit people to tread on you like a worm. That is not me. I... I have a fire inside of me. If I cannot explode, I will die! Querida, if only you could try sometimes to bank the fire a little. Perhaps. I will try. I will try. It is not that I always wish to be alone. I think perhaps I would like to marry. I know this. But your temper. So you have said, and Papa has said, and every Suta has said too many times. Well, I am I. And any man, including Don Luis, must accept me the way I am. I wish to ride alone. I'm afraid not, senorita. The Ponderosa is a pretty big place. You might get lost. Then someone else will ride with me. There is no one else around, sorry. Margarita! A cinch!
How dare you, senor? How dare you? You didn't tighten the cinch on your saddle. There is nothing wrong with this saddle. You make a fuss over nothing. I would have known if this saddle was slipping. <laughs> Do you see what you have forced? I tried to keep my temper with you, senor, but you are impossible. Maybe so, senorita. I am a man of limited patience. And believe me, you try those limits beyond endurance. Looks like you'll have to walk home. You will walk, senor, not I. Oh, no, senorita. My horse is much too dangerous for you. You know I am excellent with the horse. I couldn't possibly let a delicate creature like yourself ride this animal. Then you will bring me one back. Senorita, you will walk, whether in my company or by yourself. It is entirely up to you, but you will walk. Well, you do know about rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes? Of course, they uh, shouldn't bother you too much, but you can never tell about these wildcats. Well, have it your own way. Be surprised. I would like to ride. Yes? It really isn't so hard. Try it. Just once. Please. Your horse awaits, Senorita. Possibly be your Don Luis? It cannot be anyone else, can it? But he was not to come here. We. What am I to do, Signor? Have, have him see me this way for the first time? It does matter then what people think of you, hmm? We are what we are, Signor. But see, it does matter. No one wants to be alone, Signor. All right. I'll go over and talk to him for a few minutes now. I'll give you a chance to get upstairs and change. Grazie, signor. I regret my rudeness to you. I will try to apply the lesson you have tried to taught me. Madam Cartwright, welcome to the Ponderosa. Luis Santana, at your service, senor. 
You'll think it's a little foolish of me, but I couldn't wait home any longer. I heard so much about Margarita. Uh, she is here, isn't she? Oh, yes, she's here. And uh, you are welcome, Don Luis. And uh, Don Miguel and uh, the entire family will be very delighted to see you. Oh, I wanted to meet this Margarita so much. And tell me, is she as beautiful as they say? Oh, yes, 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 she's very beautiful. And what about her nature, huh? Her nature? Yes, her nature. I heard she is very hot temper, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. People often exaggerate things, you know? <laughs> I hope you're wrong, senor. You do. What's a tiger without clothes? <laughs> it makes for more excitement. A man needs a good fight every now and then to warm the blood. I, mean, I should have gone to Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. uh, senor, uh, can we go to find my tiger now, please? Senor, huh? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Gracias, Manuel. Uh, senor Cartwright, Don Miguel, may I propose a toast? Why, of course. Thank you. I propose a toast to Elenita, my future bride. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, senores, a toast, yes. But to my future bride. Your future bride? ¿Cuándo deciste eso? Ahora. Estás loca, ella se va a casar conmigo. Nunca, nunca, nunca. Ah, a bueno, a ver, Don Miguel, ¿con quién se va a casar con su quién? Con Esta, no, 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 nunca. Elenita, ¿con quién te vas a casar tú? Conmigo. Decídelo de una vez. Salud. Salud. What are you so glum about? Oh, Margarita, Don Luis. Oh, Adam, you haven't taken her to my heart? <laughs> I haven't any good Spanish blood, remember? Oh, uh, I've convinced Don Miguel to stay on for a couple more days. It's really for Don Luis's sake. He's kind of tired and his ranch is quite a piece from here. And it is very kind of you, Ben. Oh, not at all, Don Miguel. You know that you're welcome to stay on here for as long as you like. Adam, what do you think? Well, I'm glad you asked, sir. I'm afraid things aren't working out exactly the way you planned. Oh? Now, you see, Don Luis wants to... Don Luis wants to meet your daughter, Don Miguel. I've heard so much of her beauty, among other things. I'm most impatient to see her. Well, I am sure that she will be here any moment, Don Luis. Ah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, would you care for a demi tasse? I mean, uh, some chocolate? Oh, no, coffee is fine. Well, fine, fine. Ben, shall I set up the chessboard? Yeah, come on, I'll help you. Right. May I sit next to you, senorita? Oh, please. There you are. Gracias. I you am mo <laughs> <laughs> After you. Por favor, Don Luis, you first. I wanted to say you are most beautiful, Margarita. All the beauty of a Spanish knight is in you. Please, senor, you are most kind. You and I are very much alike, I think. And I think... The senor goes with much speed. Time alone will tell us this, no? 
time moves too slowly for a man who is impatient with living alone. And I am, Margarita, very impatient. Don Luis, in this at least I must agree. We are alike. I have traveled very far to come to you. And with each passing hour, I wish ever more to please you. And I, you. We'll do very well together, Margarita. I'm sure. See, si. and all that is required is that I be uh, pleasant and agreeable and uh, sweet, no? I don't mean to be insulting, but I have heard things that... What things have you heard, Don Luis? Well, that... Uh... Well, they say that if you are provoked, you you rage like a firestorm. Huh? Gossip, gossip, malicious gossip. That it isn't true. A woman would be a fool to rage at the man that she would have loved her. For him, she should always bank the fire. You wanted to talk to me? Si, senor. This Margarita, I'm very disappointed. She's not at all what I expected. <coughs> uh, she's not? A beautiful woman, I was told, and a woman of fire. Now I think I've been misled. Well, you couldn't possibly mean that she isn't beautiful enough. Oh, no, senor. But the fire, where is it? You heard as well as I what she said, and I guarantee you there is no warmth in a banked fire. She was the same the whole evening. Her manners as meek as a lamb. Look, don't go jumping to conclusions. She's probably on her good behavior, after all. I... Adam, I'm a sheep rancher. I live surrounded by sheep. And I don't want a sheep for a wife as well. I can understand that. You've been with her for several days now. Is this what she's like, always? Well, it's... Uh, it's very difficult to judge a person, especially a woman, in just a few days. But that's exactly what I must do. Once we reach my ascent, it'll be too late. I couldn't possibly send her away then. It'll be too cruel. I must decide before we leave here. Well, there's still tomorrow. I don't think another day will make any difference. We're planning a picnic tomorrow. You know about picnics. Know about them, senor? Yes. They're just full of surprises. Son of a gun! <laughs> I got a ring. Is that yours? No, that was yours. Hey, look, father, can you? <laughs> it was a lovely picnic, no? Si, señorita. Look at that. Did you ever see such a beautiful moon? You joke, senor. Certainly not. Do you not agree that it is a beautiful moon? But it is the sun, senor. You are making fun. I say it is the moon. Of course, it is the moon. 
I'm very beautiful, just as you say. Senorita, it is obviously the sun that is shining up there. Now, are you trying to make fools of us all, hmm? As it pleases you, senor, the sun, the moon, a star, is all the same to me. But look at my... My little Margarita, how like a dove, a little flower. Look, look how pleasant she looks. Yes, she's as gentle as a lamb. I'm afraid we have to talk later, you and I, Don Miguel. Margarita? Please, Signor, be kind enough to leave me alone. Believe me, I only wish I could. Senorita, you have my deepest apology. <laughs> hey, what the fuck? She's Margarita, into the water! <laughs> Carlos, stop laughing and go help Margarita out of the water! Uh, uh, Sielena, uh, Manuel, go get Margarita out of the water. Oh, Sielena. Manuel. Gracias. You are such a gentleman. Un momento. Un momento. I am as much a gentleman as you are. I will get her out Carlos, of the water. Carlos, I only I'm very sorry. Manuel. But I am just as much a gentleman as you are. The water. I will get her out of the water. Will I will get her out of the water. All right, then. You'll get her out of the water. Oh, no, I won't. She's Why don't you come You pushed me. That's right, senorita. I most certainly did do just that. I am sure it was a mistake. Will you be kind enough to help me out? Hey, Margarita, I deliberately pushed you into the water. See, si, senor. If you say so, and now, would you help me out? I'll let you in. Let it be on your head. Why do you have to choose now to be so nice? <laughs> Senor, you are a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Don Luis, no. <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> I understand what you're trying to do, Adam, but it's hopeless. Not even a sheep would have so much forbearance as that woman. Well, I've tried everything else. <laughs> Why not? Margarita! <laughs> Let's go swimming with the clothes on. <laughs> what do you do? What? Get out and fight! What are you doing? Oh, now, remember you were going to be pleasant, sweet, agreeable, kind. Don't show now! Remember <laughs> me! Oh, senorita, you are going to bank the fire. For what? If he's... If Don Luis was sweet, little... I don't want him! Why don't you get out and fight? Why don't you fight? You... How could I ever think I wanted a man? Rabbit! For you! What are you laughing? 
<laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. She's all I hope for and more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my friend. It was a matter of honor. Margarita! Margarita! I am so happy for you, Margarita! Congratulations! <laughs> Well, Mr. Shakespeare, do you mind telling me what's going on? Don't look so worried, Pa. This is the best picnic I was ever on. Ah, uh, Dom again, I sure wish that you weren't leaving quite so soon. Ah, uh, so do I, and thank you so much for your hospitality. I'm sure glad everything worked out uh, so well. What a relief. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Senor Adam. I suppose you'll soon be getting married now yourself, hmm? Soon. Oh, no, Senor. Now I have to make up my mind. Con el permiso, eh? Basta! Quietos! Adios, Senor Adam. Es tu culpa. Tú la hiciste tener tanta rabia. Tú. Señor Adam. Yes, Margarita. I found this last night when I could not sleep. For once it was not your fault. I was too happy to sleep. It is yours, no? Mm hmm. I think it may be the way to tame a shrew, but not a woman of fire. Adios. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> oh, Luis, be careful, my dress. Yes, my little tiger. <laughs> yeah. Adios. 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 I unknit that threatening, unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the meads, confounds thy fame as whirlwind shake fair buds, and in no sense is meet or amiable. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, thick, Bereft of beauty, and while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will deign to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy soul. 